everyone. Welcome to the premium podcast, The Gopher Ball. I'm Big Italy 42 here with Scott Mailwig at sports underscore 25 to life on Twitter. And we're going to be talking about after the first week of the season, we've got some hot hitters, some cold hitters, some guys we think it'll turn around, some guys who we may legitimately be concerned about. But obviously small sample size so far. We're going to run it down by position. The guys are hitting well, guys who aren't, and all the things like that. So you ready to get things going here, Scott? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. All right, starting off at catcher. Top hitter in the league so far, batting 417. He's a nice 10 for 24 with three dongs. Salvador Perez off to a nice hot start here. And uh, obviously not going to maintain a 417 batting average, but one of the better hitting catchers in the league. So I don't think that uh, a similar sort of run for the, the next few weeks or so is too far out of the question with him. Yeah, he's been in a ton of fly balls, too. I think he's 17 for 22 in terms of fly balls. And, I mean, that's going to be great for him going forward. We know he's a big power guy. And like you said, it's always nice to have a catcher who can actually hit because as we're looking at this list, there's not a lot going on at catcher right now. There's about three or four guys hitting fairly well uh, in the early going here. And Perez has been by far the best one. Yeah, the only thing really going against Perez is he's been unfortunately stuck down that seven hole a lot of times yeah. in the lineup. So obviously not his fault, but he's definitely uh, making a case for getting bumped up back where around the five hole where I think he belongs. So a um, couple other high guys, Derek Norris is a nice eight for twenty five to start off the season. Um, not much power, but uh, he doesn't. He's not going to have a ton of home run upside. Obviously, batting in that park most of the time. So he's been doing well. Buster Posey, no surprise, batting right around. 300 at 292 with a couple homers already. Um, that's pretty much it for guys that are actually off to fine starts. I mean, you've got Jason Castro, but he can only hit righties. Just 17 at-bats so far. So um, looking down at the opposite end here, you guys who are struggling. And the two worst qualified hitters so far are guys that I think both of us think will turn it around. You've got uh, Jonathan Lucroy batting 2 for 20 so far. No home runs, three strikeouts. you got Devin Masarocco at 2 for 21. I mean, he doesn't even have an extra base hit yet. I mean, two singles. So yeah. both those guys we like to think are going to gonna turn things around. It's early. I think both those guys will be fine. How about you? Yeah, I think they'll both be fine also. I mean, the other guy down there for me is Russell Martin. That, it's one guy that we talked about on the DraftKings podcast today that we both like a decent amount today just because there's not a lot of else at catcher. But it's a tough pill to swallow paying 4400 for him while he's struggling so badly. But uh, great matchup for him today. Um, like you said, most of these guys are going to turn it around at least a little. I mean, these three guys are just hitting so poorly right now that there's no way they're not going to get a, at least a little hot at some point and turn it around. Um, one guy in the middle that I think is going to go unnoticed a little bit is McCann. We talked about him on the DraftKings podcast. Also, he's hitting uh, 5 for 18 so far, which isn't bad, but he just hasn't shown much power and he just hasn't looked great. But his numbers have been there a little bit. I mean, 278 is a batting average, not terrible. Um, but I think he gets it turned around a little bit also. Yeah, I think that's a more of an adjustment to his new role and the new situation there in yep. Toronto too, so I think he'll be fine as well, and definitely still like him tonight. And moving on to first base here, we've got a couple guys that are absolutely on fire. Hottest hitter in the world, Adrian Gonzalez. Hasn't had a three-homer game in a couple days, so a little bit of a disappointment <laughs> there in GPPs, but 14 for 23 with three doubles, five home runs, Walked four times. I mean, if you don't know how hot Adrian Gonzalez has been recently, you haven't been paying attention because the guy has been the best hitter on the planet right now. So. Yeah, I mean, you're getting disappointed right now by like two for four with zero home run games when you're expecting him to hit a home run every day. I mean, he's been a little light on RBIs, but it's hard to get nitpicky when he's hitting as well as he has. I think he has only seven RBIs on five home runs. But Pathetic. Uh, we'll blame that on his teammates. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, right behind him, Miguel Cabrera hit two homers yesterday in the daytime slate. Batting a, a pedestrian 520 on the season at 13 for 25. No surprise here. One of the best hitters in the game, as he has been. Um, always in contention for MVP. So, I mean, we don't need to elaborate too much on Miguel Cabrera. He just is Miguel Cabrera. Until uh, until the day that he decides not to be anymore, his body won't let him. Yeah, I mean, he's been great. Uh, Adam Lind is a guy that we've been targeting a lot in righty-lefty matchups, and he's having a nice, really nice start to the season. He's the third guy hitting over 400 so far, 9 for 20 on the season. Only has one home run, but that's kind of what you expect from Adam Lynn. He's not a massive power guy, but he's going to hit really solidly against righties. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, another guy near and dear to my heart, Joey Votto, with his uh, 
Two homers the other night. He's got three already on the season. Bat eight for 24, 333 average. And that's a very realistic, right around where you expect Joey Votto yeah. to be. I mean, he's one of the better hitters in the game as well. And uh, even more strange with Joey Votto here, he's got two stolen bases already. I mean, he's looked, uh, he's looking, I don't know if you've seen Joey Votto this year, if you've seen, watched any of the Reds games, but he's looking trim. I mean, yeah, he, he is. He looks like he dropped some pounds, maybe uh, add a little bit of speed to his game. So if, if he's back to his old self, I mean, a little bit of discount still. Price kind of jacked up after the double dong day the other day. But, I mean, he's uh, he's a guy to take advantage of, especially against righties. Yeah. And speaking of a guy who has not dropped a few pounds, Carlos Santana's actually <laughs> looked pretty good this season. Um, despite that, uh, he's walked six times already, which I think is uh, really nice for him. Um, if he's uh, doing a lot better as far as pitch selection goes, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do all year this year. He had a nice year last year. Um, he's looked really, really good at the plate. The, the power hasn't really come around yet for him, but you know it's going to. Um, I feel really good about him in the early going of this season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One more guy I want to highlight here, Pedro Alvarez, the guy that we know has a ton of power but also strikes out a ton. And no surprise that he already has eight strikeouts and 20 at-bats. But a couple home runs on the season already. One of those better tournament plays for you, especially when he's at home. Got a ton of power. I, I will say the, the very first time I was – at a Pirates game at PNC, Pedro Alvarez hit one out of the entire ballpark. And uh, ever since that yeah. day, I can't forget that. When I'm making tournament lineups and he fits, I go ahead and just get myself some Pedro exposure with that uh, that power. I mean, he likes to swing and miss, but when he makes contact, that ball goes a long way. Yeah, I think he's, what, probably, I think he's second or third in the league in strikeouts with eight already. Yeah. But, I mean, the power's there. Like you said, nobody's really penalizing for strikeouts over other outs right now so it's not something we really need to be concerned about for fantasy other than just general contact at this point yeah. um and he's been hitting pretty well i think he's what six for 20 so far yeah hitting 300. Um, yeah so i mean if he can keep his uh batting average up he's not going to be a big walks guy i think he's only got one walk on the year he's just he's just not great at dissecting the strike zone he's just a big hacker with a ton of power and if he's hitting well i mean you're going to be really happy when he's in your lineup but he's definitely going to go through those stretches this year where he's just disappears and strikes out a ton. But uh, he looks locked into his uh, position in the lineup at this point where we weren't so sure about that over the last couple seasons. Yeah, yeah. And now that he's over at first base, seems more comfortable defensively. Yeah. Was was not a very good defensive third baseman either. So uh, one guy who actually has more strikeouts and 11 on the season, more than Pedro Alvarez, Adam LaRoche. He has two home runs in his new spot in the, uh, in Chicago batting behind Jose Abreu, who's off to a slow start, but I'm not concerned about Abreu. I think he'll be fine, of course. But Adam Roche already struck out 11 times. Is this uh, concerning to you at all? I mean, 11 times in 21 at-bats seems uh, like Mark Reynolds-type numbers. I mean, that, that seems alarming. Yeah, it's rough. I think he's leading the league in strikeouts, speaking of people who are up there. Um, I mean, you got to think with his past history. I mean, we have a ton of data on him where he hasn't been a big strikeout guy. I would think he gets it going. Um Maybe he's pressing a little bit with Abreu struggling. I mean, it's a lot easier for Abreu who's hitting 350 right now for him to, to just ease up a little bit. But um, with Abreu struggling in front of him, it, it's a little bit tougher on him. Um, you got to think he turns it around, though. Another guy that's right next to LaRoche in terms of hitting right now is Pools. is only 4 for 22. He's burned me a couple times already. I, I stacked the Angels the night you won this uh, Grand Slam, and... Basically, everyone did something except Pujols went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts in that game for me. Yeah. And right in the middle of my stack, too, that it was just crushing. But um, you got to think he turns it around, too. He's hitting in such a good spot in the lineup with the guys around him. And their lineup's playing really well outside of him. So yeah. um, you got to think he gets it turned around, too. Rizzo's another guy down here that has struggled to start the season. Only has 14 at-bats so far. Um, I think he probably turns it around, too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And... Uh... A uh, couple guys down there at the bottom, not a ton of surprise. Brandon Moss, we know, matches righties, doesn't play against lefties hardly, if ever, because he can't touch lefties. He's a power-only type of guy, uh, batting just 2 for 16 on the season, but that's really not all that surprising. I mean, I'm not saying I expect him to bat 125 for the season, but he's not a batting average type of guy. He's a, he's a home run hitter, in the middle of the lineup, and that's about it for him. Yep. All right, moving on here to second base where your top hitter on the year, and this is an eight to nine, a guy who usually bats eighth in the order, and uh, sometimes nine, we've seen now a couple times this season, putting the, the pitcher ahead of him, DJ LeMahieu, batting 480, at yeah. uh, 12 for 25, not a power guy at all, no home runs yet, but 
And also not a walks guy. Hasn't walked a single time, but swinging a really hot bat right there. He uh, right ahead of Ian Kinsler, who everyone knows is off to a really great start. He scored 10 runs already, Ian Kinsler. No yeah. surprise with those monster bats behind him. But uh, LeMahieu obviously going to drop off. You don't expect him to bat 300-plus this year. But, I mean, maybe if you're uh, if you're willing to go crazy with some stacks, get yourself one of those wraparound stacks for the Rockies. Get him in there cheap at the uh, 8 or 9 hole. Yeah, it's always, it's such a struggle doing those wraparound stacks with the uh, pitcher hitting in the 9 hole in the National League, though. It just makes it really tough because you're almost guaranteeing yourself an out in the middle of that stack. It makes it, makes it really tough to stomach sometimes. But it's really hard to just, like, plug LeMahieu into your lineup when he's by himself because, I mean, you know he can disappear at any time. Um, he's never put up numbers like this before. But while he's hot, it's really hard to argue with. Yeah, and especially Kensler. I mean, he's a guy you can go and slot in there anytime you can afford him. I mean, yeah. Miguel Cabrera, J.D. Martinez, Victor Martinez behind him, Cespedes. I mean, it's just this incredibly stacked lineup. He's hitting well. He's going to score runs. you gotta, you got to love him right now. Yeah, especially when Cabrera and him are hot at the same time. I mean, the numbers are just like a video game. It's ridiculous because when they're hitting back-to-back and just both locked in, it's it's so tough to pitch to that lineup. And like you mentioned, the guys behind them are hitting really well too. And so it's just a really, really stacked lineup. Yeah. Um, elsewhere, you've got D. Gordon, who's uh, not not a big average hitter, but off to a nice start this year, 9 for 26, sitting at 346. Obviously, his value a lot in uh, stolen bases. He's three for four so far on the season, so he's gonna he's gonna regress a little bit more to the mean. But uh, it's an encouraging start for a guy who was pretty much just a speedster, you know, in the minor leagues. He was never a guy hit for obviously not for power. He weighs about sixty four pounds, but uh, not a guy that was much of a contact hitter as well. I mean, he's uh, infield singles type, singles type of guy. So yeah, that's a really nice start for him. Yeah, definitely. And the fact that he's just putting the ball in play a ton, I think he only has two strikeouts on the season. Yeah. Um, it's going to be great for him with his speed. And he hasn't even really gotten it going in the stolen bases department. He's only got three so far. And for how many times he's been on, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so you got to think that number jumps a little bit if he keeps hitting well. Obviously, he's not going to hit 345 for the whole season. But um, if he can stay up anywhere in that, like, 280, 290 range. I mean, he could have a monster year in terms of stolen bases. Yeah, and especially with Yelich and Stanton behind him, neither one off to a tremendous start yet this season. So, I mean, only five runs scored for a speedster like Gordon. you got to expect he's going to be around the league leaders if he can continue to get on base. Yeah, right. If he's hitting like this, I mean, the numbers in terms of runs and stolen bases and stuff like that are feel really low for yeah. how well he's been hitting. And if the guys behind him get going, I mean, he's going to score a ton of runs even if he's not hitting at this rate. I think he's off to a really solid start. Yeah, absolutely. And here's a guy that I want to mention to you and see. I do think this might be an actual cause for concern, getting up there in age and a really, really old lineup, honestly. Chase Utley, just oh, yeah. two for 19, six strikeouts this year. Is this the beginning of the end for Chase Utley? Because, I mean, it's hard to argue against that right now. Yeah, I mean, over his career, he's been a massively good April hitter. I mean, he's one of the best uh, April hitters in the history of uh, the major leagues and he's just doing nothing right now he's a guy that I love playing in April because you that's the one time you can count on him being healthy yeah. and being out there almost every day and he just does not look good right now and we started to see this a little bit towards the end of last season with the injuries and missing a lot of games and then never really getting in a rhythm um, I, I really hope he gets it going but this early in the season is usually when he's at his best, and he has not looked good right now. Yeah, at this stage in his career, could be an actual cause for concern. Obviously, we're not overreacting to the 19 at bats, but you know, just the trend, like Scott mentioned, you know, he's, he's a good hitter at the beginning of the year, but this year just real, real brutal. I mean, two singles so far this year, really rough. So, a um, couple other guys, not much surprise. My hometown, Brandon Phillips, batting in the seven hole where he belongs. Talked about it with some friends before the season. Couldn't believe he was batting the two hole last year. It was ridiculous. Him anywhere in the top five. The guy, I mean, he's aging. He's still a tremendous defender. I think the best in the league at second base still, but don't expect much out of him, and I won't be playing him anyway in that seven hole. Yeah, the other guy that's been really struggling in terms of strong second base hitters is Cano. I mean, he hasn't done anything yet. I'm not really too worried about him. I don't, it's hard to really like him in Seattle. I mean, if I was him, I never would have went there in the first place. I don't want to play all my home games in that ballpark. I know, Money. but I, I know, but it's like yeah. at some point you got to be like, why? Like, take a little bit less and go play somewhere you can just hit a bunch of bombs. But yeah. I don't know. It's not it, my maybe money, he just so. hates Yankees fans and he just went to take that money because you knew the Yankees had money too. Maybe he just yeah. want to leave because he just hated the fans so much. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was really weird to see him go there. I mean, he's going to get it turned around a little bit. I mean, he's going to hit for average. The power is not going to be there in Seattle for the most part. I mean, it's not. he's never going to reach those Yankee Stadium numbers. Um, but he'll get it turned around a little bit. He's one of those guys right now where it's like you, you almost can't pay up at second base because there's so little at the top there. I mean, with D. Gordon red hot, his price has gone up. Yeah. But outside of that, I mean, you're – we're looking at the same guys at second base every day right now where we're talking about D Gordon. Um, Jason Kipnis is another guy who's been pretty hot this season that uh, I've been playing. You got to love his power speed combo. He hasn't stolen a base yet though, which has been kind of frustrating because I played him a couple times yeah. and usually once you play him a few times, you're going to end up with a stolen base and he hasn't stolen a single base on the season yet. But I mean, he's eight for 26 on the year. That's probably about where he's going to be. I expect him to hit around 290 on the season. Hopefully um, it's a little more power than he's shown. And when he's getting on base, the stolen bases will come. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like, yeah, like you mentioned with Cano, it's really tough to pay his price tag, especially at home in Safeco. I mean, uh, Pitcher's Park. So, yeah, he'll probably turn it around, but that doesn't make him a great target in DFS most nights. Right, his price price is, he's priced like he's still on the Yankees. He has been since he left. It's been crazy. I mean, yeah. he's a good hitter, but it's tough to play him at Safeco. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree there. We're going to go ahead and move on here to third base where – no surprise, another Rockies hitter up top. Nolan Arenado batting 375. He's got a couple homers, four doubles. So six of his nine hits have been either doubles or home runs. Not a single strikeout. That's the more impressive thing. I mean, only 24 at-bats, but guys putting the ball in play at home on the road. So, But his price, obviously, at home, I mean, really tough to play him, especially on DraftKings because they've, they've gotten tough with that pricing. And, you know, you're going to need him in those Colorado stacks. But outside of that, I mean, it's it's tough to play him at times with that price tag. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I mean, especially on DraftKings, those Colorado prices are going to be insane all year, and it's going to be really tough to figure out what to do with some of these guys that are red hot because, I mean, their lineup is just stacked this year. I mean, all these guys are progressing. They're all pretty young, um, coupled in with the veterans that are hitting basically every year. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how the Rockies do this season because I really like their offense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right below him, you got Mike Mike Moustakis, who had a nice spring, kind of carried it over so far, 7 for 21, yeah. a couple homers, and uh, he's a guy you obviously don't like to play him against lefties, but Yost likes to play him in the two-hole against lefties, which doesn't yeah. make a whole lot of sense to anyone. Yeah, he's hitting second all the time right now, and I, I was really surprised that first game that they played a lefty that he was in the two-hole, because, I mean, they have so many guys that hit lefties well, too, that you would think that they would switch it up a little bit, but... I mean, he's proved me wrong so far because he's just raking every game. Yeah, um, He's looked really good, and he's a guy that I've been a fan of for a long time, and I've seen him go up and down quite a bit. And um, it's nice to see him like finally finding a solid spot. Yeah, it yeah, seems like he's finally locked in. And uh, a couple other guys you've got around the top. Uh, Mr. Uh, productive but unproductive, Yunel Escobar, is sitting at 304 on the season, 7 for 23. He's got a couple doubles, but... No home runs, no RBIs, no stolen bases. In fact, caught stealing once. Hasn't struck out yet, but another one of those guys. He's a cash game play if he's up high in the order, and that's it. Don't expect big things out of him. And this isn't anything new with him. He's not a power hitter at all. Yeah, I mean, he like you said, he's a solid cash game play. I mean, he's going to get the job done for you most of the time. Um, he's probably not going to hit quite this well all season. His walks have been a nice surprise, though. Yeah. Uh, so he's hard to argue with. Um, Sandoval's looked pretty good, actually. He's up in the league leaders and at bats where, where he's hitting in the order and how well Boston's been hitting. Um, hitting 300 right now. His problem is always that he doesn't walk, but he has two walks on the season already, which is nice. Um, but I don't know. He's not a guy that I really target very often unless the matchup is, like, perfect. Yeah, and you got to like some uh, some nice bats hitting around him. I mean, if, if, if Pedroia keeps it going... You know, yeah. uh, he's he's shown a little bit of power. Not hitting for great average so far this year, but if he keeps uh, getting on base, you're gonna like his uh, Pablo's upside as well with more uh, more potential for RBIs there too. Um, elsewhere at third base, you got Todd Frazier. He's got three home runs already, shown over the past couple of years that he's a solid hitter. I think he's uh, right about where you expect him to be. Obviously, not three home runs per week, but around that 292 average. I don't think that's too much of a stretch. Probably more around 280 for Todd right. Frazier, but. I mean, he's he's emerging as a solid hitter, and uh, maybe maybe I'm a little biased with him being my hometown guy, but uh, I do think he's one of the better third basemen in the league right now. Yeah, I mean, he's just he's just so consistent that I mean, you feel really good. Obviously, he just had a three home run week, so there's a little bit of upside there too. I mean, it's really hard to argue with him as a solid play most nights. 
Um, right, right below him, we got Brett Lowry, who's hitting right around that same range where I think he's going to kind of settle in at some point. Um, we mentioned on the DraftKings podcast today, he's been a little bit up and down so far. Um, I think he's got eight strikeouts already, but he's been making good contact as far as like actually getting on pace and stuff like that. So um, I just don't really love where he's hitting in the order sometimes. He's only got one RBI on the season. The power is going to come around a little bit for him, but I don't expect him to ever be a, a big power guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm looking at some cold hitters here. We've got Manny Machado finally got on the board. Now one for 19. Yeah. There was that, uh, the sky is falling in Baltimore that Manny Machado couldn't hit the baseball. But, I mean, not overly concerned. He's got three walks already on the season. Um, he's a fine hitter. I think he'll be all right. Nice. He's young. I think he's like 11 years old now. But uh, Manny Machado, <laughs> he'll be fine, obviously. One for 19. You feel like it's concerning, but with a guy at his age, I think he legitimately, I think he's, what, 22, somewhere in there. Yeah. So, nice young hitter. Great defensive player. I think he'll turn things around. I'm not too concerned about him. Yeah, I'm not too concerned either. Um, Longoria is kind of more in the middle. He's a guy that I it's I've been playing a lot, and he's been struggling a little bit. Um, he's looked good though. Like he's got five walks on the season. His plate discipline's been great. Um, he's only struck out three times. The power is going to come around. The Tampa Bay offense in general should come around a little bit. Um, He's just he's just struggled a little bit more than I expected in the early going, but he's got three doubles on the year, so it looks like he's he's hitting the ball well. I think he gets it going pretty soon here. Yeah, I agree. And uh, the guy who may be the biggest bust, at least so far in the DFS community, is Aramis Ramirez. Four for twenty three so far. We heard we we heard Brewer stack, Brewer stack, Brewer stack, Brewer yeah. stack most days against bad pitchers, and all but one day they were awful. Even the one day they were good, they weren't great. And Ramirez really had no part of it. I mean. One extra base hit so far, not a single RBI, not a single walk. Only three strikeouts is fine, but, I mean, he's not getting on base at all. So he's uh, he's one of those guys getting up there in years. And, I mean, I know yeah. it's early, but it's not looking good for him right now. He's not hitting for power. He's not he's not patient at the plate. Really concerning with him right now. Yeah, he's one of those guys that tends to slow start pretty often, though. So I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, like you said, Part of what's exaggerated his cold start is that they started out against the Rockies, and it, people have been trying to stack the Brewers, and he's right in the heart of that order. And so a lot of people end up with him when they're making that stack, and he just hasn't been very good. But his numbers in April over the course of his career aren't anything like special. I think he's only had one like really strong April recently, and he usually gets going when the uh, weather warms up a bit. So I'm not overly concerned about him right now as much as I am a guy like Chase Utley who we talked about earlier. Yeah, man, that's a fair point. Moving on here to shortstop, where there's not a lot to see. And, man, that Troy Tulowitzki sure landed people down with zero home runs, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> good thing he has six doubles already, and is batting yeah. 391. So, I mean, temporary expectations there, obviously. His price is up there, but the guy's still hitting almost 400. Six doubles, four RBI on the season. I, I He's going to be just fine. Maybe not paying out that $7,000 price tag, but... You know, I mean, uh, the power will come with tu with Tulowitzki, and it seems like he's just doing what the team needs. I mean, obviously you want to hit a home run every time, but if he sees a gap, he's hitting the gap. I mean, he's he's off to a great start this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other guy up there that we've been paying for a lot of shorts up is Jose Reyes, who's off to a fantastic start. He's a guy like D. Gordon, where I'm kind of surprised. He's been on base 12 times already, uh, 10 hits and two walks, and only has one stolen base so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's had a lot of those hamstring issues and stuff, so maybe he's scaling back the full-out sprinting a little bit. Um, but I expect his stolen bases to come around at some point. It's a huge part of his game. I can't see him just abandoning it. But one stolen base and zero caught stealing is just really surprising for how many times he's been on base so far. So you got to think that number jumps up a little bit. Yeah, and you like to think his runs are going to come uh, as well. I mean, only three runs scored so far, but those big bats behind him, none of them off to a particularly great start so far this season. Right. So once they get it going... As usual, he's going to be up there among the lead leaders like he is every year. So, A um, couple more guys we want to highlight here is Drupal Cabrera, a guy that we talked about in the podcast earlier, batting 320 off to a nice start. Never really been a power guy. He had that one season with over 20, I believe it was. But, uh, you know, he's just a guy that's just solid. He gets it done, great lineup spot. So you just continue to like his Drupal Cabrera there for Tampa. Yeah, definitely. Just fast enough to steal you a couple bases. I mean, he's just he's not a guy that's going to really wow you in any category, but um, he's just solid across the board. His prices have been great so far this season. That'll probably stick around because he's not going to be a guy that has those monster games that's going to drive his price up. Um, so that's always nice to see. Uh, you got to like where he's hitting in the order. 
Um, there's another guy in here that I was looking at. Oh, Segura is another guy that he's actually the brewer that's gotten off to a pretty nice start so far. Yeah. Uh, six for 19 on the season has a stolen base. Um, he's the problem with him and uh, Jeanette is that they're flipping the batting order around a little bit, and so you never really know until the lineups come out whether he's going to be hitting two or seven. So um, that's a tough spot there. Yeah, I mean, great value when he's in the two, but when he's on the seven, I mean, like we said. And, and like you knew, probably know, you don't really want to target your guys out in the seven holes. So Yeah, awesome. right. And so it makes it tough because, I mean, he's got a nice price everywhere right now, but only 19 at-bats on the year because of the Brewers lineup struggling and hitting lower in the lineup. Um, it's made it kind of tough, but he's he's off to a nice start. Uh, if he stays this hot, you got to think he ends up in the two-hole more often than not, um, unless Jeanette is really hot also. But you got to like him a lot more. Absolutely. One guy who was a hot topic, mostly in season-long leagues beforehand before the season but been a topic in dfs as well as ian desmond he's sitting at uh 136 on the season just three for 22 but two of those three hits were doubles he has one walk five strikeouts so slow start for him but i like to think he's going to turn around he's a guy that i think people exaggerate his power a little bit he has power relative to other shortstops but relative to most players not not that far above average regarding power but I think he's a guy that'll be fine as we move forward. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, another guy that's been struggling is uh, Andrews. Yeah. Um, 31 at bats so far, only five hits. Um, you know when he starts getting on base, the stolen bases will come around a bit. Uh, he hasn't walked yet, which has always been a problem for him. The run scored will come around when he starts getting on base. Um, I think he'll be good, too. Yeah, completely agree there. All right, moving on here to the outfield. Last position for us here. And your top hitter in the outfield, believe it or not, Lorenzo Kane at 417. Off to a phenomenal start, 10 for 24. Got a couple doubles, a home run, a stolen base. He did get caught once, but off to a tremendous start. And he's a cheap, cheap source of getting yourself, especially if you're stacking Kansas City, which always goes way under the radar when they're facing a bad pitcher, which they are today. So. Yeah. I mean, you got to like Lorenzo Cain and his start. They're obviously not going to maintain it, but uh, kind of an all-around performance so far from him. Yeah, I mean, he's had nice split numbers over the past couple of years. I mean, he might be one of those guys that's emerging a little bit. Obviously, he's not going to hit 417 for the whole season, but um, I feel pretty good about him this year. I mean, he's looked great. He's got three walks, only four strikeouts. Um, RBIs have been there. Obviously, when you're hitting 417, those are going to come, but uh, I, I think this is a pretty legit hot start. I, I really like what he's been doing. He's looked great at the plate. Um, there's really not a lot to argue with here. Like you said, Kansas City's lineup's kind of underrated right now. It might be because a couple of the guys are hot in it and it makes making it look a little bit better, but um, I think most of their hitters, especially in the top half of the order, are pretty legit. Yeah, and they're a great contact team. I mean, they struck out the least of any team last right. year, in this team, and, and you don't see much different this year. I mean, once again, they put the ball in play, so that's the best thing about Kansas City. They don't hit a lot of home runs, obviously among the worst in the league last year. But if you're putting the ball in play every single time, for the most part, I mean, you, you got to like your, your chances. Your stacks won't pay off as quickly, but, I mean, you can still have plenty of big innings with four or five hits strung together. Yeah, right. And like you said, they have, they've had some issues um, with power, but with Moustakis playing really well, I mean, he could add some power to that lineup. That'll be nice in the two-hole. Um, if he starts hitting with a lot more power, I mean, maybe they move him down a little bit um, to kind of – play behind some of these guys that are hitting really well, getting on base. I mean, I really like their lineup this year. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan as well. And uh, a couple other guys near the top that we have mentioned on the podcast, uh, Travis Snyder, 7 for 18 so far. Uh, not not an everyday hitter. Every once in a while I get a day off. But uh, he's been in the 3, the 5, the 7 hole. He's off to a nice start, 7 of 18, with 5 walks. So, I mean, showing a ton of plate discipline, too. He was a, yeah. a sleeper for a lot of people coming into this season in that new role in Baltimore, and he's really thriving so far. Yeah, definitely. And also in that order, Adam Jones has just been crushing lefties like he always does. I mean, he's almost an auto play against lefties for me at this point. Yep. Um, he's just been crushing them. And he's hitting pretty well against righties, too, 380 overall on the season, um, 8 for 21. The power's been there. He's got two doubles and two home runs with – but the way Snyder and some of these other Baltimore players have been hitting, it's been easy for him to rack up RBIs. Yeah. Uh, he's only struck out once. He's he's honestly look. He's probably one of the better looking hitters so far on the young season. Yeah, and uh, right right along there, also eight for twenty one. Kevin Kiermeyer, as you know, one of my favorites. Four doubles, a triple, two homers already. The guy is just mashing the ball. And finally, at the top of that order, I've been barking up that tree for 
over 365 days now that I think he should be up near the top of the order. And finally, my, my wildest dreams have come true. And as long as Kevin Kiermaier stays reasonably priced and is batting at the top of that order, I love him most nights. Yeah. Um, I mean, can't argue with that. He's looked great, too. Um, only two strikeouts on the season for him also. Um, speaking of guys who have not been very good, uh, Carlos Gomez is yet another brewer that has disappointed me many a time on the young season. Uh, he's only six for 25, I believe. And I mean, he's hitting 240. It's okay. I mean, he's just not, he can't give you the stolen bases that you really need from him to pay off his price right now. He's not getting on base. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been tough. He's got three doubles. He's looked okay. He's going to get it turned around. Um, like I said, you know, when he gets on base, he's going to steal the bases that you need. Only one run scored. That's going to have one around Mr. Ramirez has been one of the worst third basemen hitting wise so far on the season. So He's a guy I expect to get turned around for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, looking at the bottom here, some guys. And uh, one guy, Marlon Bird. I didn't have huge hopes for him at his ripe old age of 37. He's got two hits on the season, one of which was uh, just a misplayed ball that just kind of dropped for the game-winning hit, if you'd like to call it that. So he's yep. looked terrible. Not too surprised there. Other guys around the bottom that are a little bit surprising. You've got uh, Yasiel Puig who has seven strikeouts and 22 at-bats, does have a homer. You like to think he'll be all right. I mean, had some issues with his whole uh, his attitude and his clubhouse demeanor at times. But, I mean, the guy's a tremendous talent. you got you got to think he's really going to turn things around. Yeah, there's a lot of talented guys uh, scrounging around down here at the bottom so far. Uh, Stanton hasn't done a whole lot yet. Yeah, McCutcheon, uh, Bautista. Yep. Uh, there was somebody else that I saw down here that's been struggling really, really badly, too. Oh, uh well, Adam Eaton for the White Sox is a guy that I was really excited about going into the season. He just has not looked good so far. He's been making decent contact. He's only struck out twice, but I was expecting a nice hot start to the season for him. I hope he turns it around, but um, he's still a young guy that's still trying to figure out how to hit in the major leagues. So, Yeah, and uh, you got Starling Marte, one more guy I want to har- highlight. Uh, yeah. He's got a good lineup spot, but he's out here pulling his best Adam Dunn impression with uh, 12 strikeouts and 22 at-bats. Yeah, that's the guy. I knew there was somebody that was ahead of uh, LaRoche when we were talking about him earlier. I forgot that it was Marte that has 12 strikeouts so far. He's never been a big strikeout guy before in the past, though. Yeah. I mean, he's been, he's a, like, he hasn't been great, but 12 strikeouts so far is, is rough. He just can't be seeing the ball very well right now. No, and uh, another guy with big strikeouts, Michael Kadire, but, I mean, in that Mets lineup, you got David Wright, and you've got him, and you've got uh, not a whole lot else. So he, I didn't expect big things out of him. Maybe some Mets fans did this year, but you move from Coors Field to City Field, you're not going to see a whole lot of uh, – you're going to expect a big de- decrease. Maybe not a lot yeah. of strikeouts, but, you know, I mean, it's uh, not a great spot for him right now. Yeah, definitely having a tough time. Absolutely. And with that, that's going to wrap things up. We kind of touched on a lot of uh, hot and cold hitters for you to give yourself an idea of – you know, who's seeing the ball well, who's not, who's getting it done, who's who's hitting for power, the guys maybe to be concerned about, some guys you want to be patient with. So thanks for hanging out with us. Check out our great content at dailyfantasycafe.com, and we'll be back again tomorrow.